Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Equip a Destiny podcast. My name is Bishop Betty Gross, and I am so glad that you are here. Welcome to the podcast where we're equipping you for your destiny. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it seems like we've had just a little bit of technical difficulty today. And uh, see, see, y'all, I, listen, this is, this is, I can smile, you know, because, because, it's it's a good feeling, like you know, like when you know you've grown in the Lord. <laughs> it's it's a good feeling, man, when you know you're growing. You know, like when you've had situations in your in your life in the past where you responded one way, uh, but now because of your growth and your maturity, you responded a different way. See, I remember there was a time, man, when I would have just come straight on glue. I'd have been grabbing my laptop. Hey, this thing ain't working. What's going on? Um, but you know, Hey, you know, I, Hey, listen, listen, the Lord, the Lord, <laughs> the Lord has done a, um, a, a, a mighty work in my life. And so, uh, so I'm able to go through these, these challenges, man, uh, uh, with a smile. And so it seems like we had a little bit of te- technical, technical difficulties on, uh, on Facebook. That's okay. Cause we got a lot of people who are trying to bring the good news of the gospel to social media. So these are good problems to have. And so if I'm going to have a problem connecting, if I'm going to have a problem with my feed going through, I, I would like to say it's for a good reason. Can you say man to this? And so again, we are glad to have you with us tonight. I'm so excited. We have such a wonderful, wonderful lesson uh, for you. We're beginning a lesson. We're going to be talking about hearing God. <clears throat> how to hear God clearly and know uh, what he is saying uh, to you. And uh, this is, this is very, very important. And and I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I, I say this to, uh, to my wife all the time. I have to say this like I feel it. Um, so I got to tell you this. I have to get this to you, you know, straight, no chaser. Um, because why it's so important is because let's be honest, man. There's a lot of people who say they hear from God that when you hear what they say, God say it. Come on, somebody. Am I am I the only one? Sometimes people could come to you and tell me, you know, I heard the Lord say, and when they when they tell you what it is that they think they heard the Lord say, you you in your mind, you, you looking at them going like, oh yeah, okay, okay. But in your mind, you're going, mm, I don't know about that. And and I hear this a lot. And, and, and people have asked me, Bishop, how do I know when I'm hearing from God, how, I, how do I know if it's me or how do I know if God is speaking to me? And I want you to know you're, you're not by yourself. You're not alone. If you've ever had those questions before, listen, I, I'm a bishop, man. I've been walking with the law for a long time. I still have to qualify what I hear. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I Listen, I have to check what I'm hearing as well. And so and so, I, that's what we want to talk about to, in this series is we want to talk about, first of all, understanding that everything you hear ain't God. I'm just want to put that out there. You know, I'm on, that's just want to clear there. You know, listen, listen, everything you hear isn't God. And then there's some people who don't feel like they're able to hear God at all. And so we're going to, we're going to deal with that. And so at the conclusion of this lesson, um, I, I want us to be able to, first of all, uh, put ourselves in a heart position to hear from God. And then also, I want us to, to, to proactively know how to discern. Mm. Boy, I wish I that that's how to discern the voice of the Lord and who's speaking to us. And so, and then we're going to talk about some of the disciplines of hearing. Oh my God. 
Yes, hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so that's going to be very good for uh, some of our um, more spiritual uh, people uh, who hear a lot from the Lord and sometimes feel like they got to say everything they hear. Mm. So we're going to talk about the disciplines of hearing from the Lord. Y'all don't like me tonight. Amen. Praise God. So that's what we're going to get into. So let's, let's just go ahead and get right into the word tonight. I want to talk with you out of John chapter three. Just got a few verses. I want to lift in your hearing tonight. John chapter three, we're going to start at verse uh, number one. And uh, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Praise God. All right. I see my wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. What's going on, Mr. Charles Riddick. Okay. All right, praise God. All right, so let's get into the word. John chapter three, starting at verse number one. I'm reading from the New King James. You may be reading from some other translation, but we'll arrive, arrive at the same destination. So the Bible says, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. It says, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered to him saying, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Note that down. He says, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter and enter the kingdom of God. Notice he said, see, initially, now he's saying enter. Make note of that. He says, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. He said, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from. And where it goes, so is everyone who is born of spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? How can these things be? Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, tonight we're talking about the importance of hearing uh, from God, being able to hear God. So First of all, what I want you to understand is that the reason this is really so important is because you, you really cannot have the life that God has for you unless you can what? Hear him. I, I say this all the time and say this for years. You cannot walk with God unless you can hear from God. If you go and survey the word, you're going to find more, you're going to find far more instances of God speaking to people than you will see God showing himself to people. Matter of fact, the scripture says no man can see God and live. I, I ain't got time to unpack that one right there. Uh, but, 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 but God has, God has spoken to, to, to mankind more than he has demonstrated his glory. And so my point I'm trying to say is that if you're going to be able to experience God in an incredible way, you got to be able to what? Hear him. The things that Jesus did as he walked upon the earth, he didn't do them because he was the second person of the Godhead. He did them because the Holy Spirit rest ruled and abide on his life. And he only did what he heard from the father. So when it was time to heal, he only healed because he heard God say heal. You don't hear what I'm saying tonight. So it was by his hearing that he was able to walk lockstep with spirit. Amen. Praise God. And to see an incre uh, incredible power of God manifest in his life. And so, so too is it with us that if we're going to see the incredible life that God has for us, we got to be able to hear him. I cannot stress this enough. You must be able to hear and discern the voice of God. And so uh, the Bible tells us in John chapter 10, verse number 10, amen, praise the Lord. If you got a minute, just turn over there real quick. I'm going to. Just want to deal with that very quickly. So John 10 and 10 says, watch this now. 
He said, the thief comes not except to steal and kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life. Come on, somebody. And that they may have it more abundantly. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Then, right in the context of him talking about the thief, watch this now. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I'm not going to unpack all of that. But then he begins to talk about how his sheep is able to what? Hear his voice. Can I deal with this for just a few minutes? So what he's trying to get us to understand, he's saying, that the thief has an agenda and the agenda of the thief is to rob, skill, rob, kill, and to destroy. Now, the thief doesn't show up with a, with a, with a sign across his chest saying, hey, how you doing? My name thief. No, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't say, hey, you know, you better watch out for me because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to rob some of you. Watch me because I kill stuff. He's not going to do that. But the enemy comes to us, watch this now, parading like a shepherd. You don't hear me tonight. Boy, I feel like preaching. He comes parading like a shepherd. How then does the sheep know how to follow the shepherd? By the shepherd's voice. Come on now. And so what the enemy does, he confuses the shepherd by giving them an alternative voice. Come on. And the end of his misleading, the end of his uh, intrusive behavior, the end of his deception is that he kills, uh, uh, he still kills and destroys. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's progressive. So, so when you are not being led by the voice of God, then you are being led by an alternative Shepherd, come on, somebody. I wish I could tell you it was neutral ground. There is no neutral ground. You're either being led by the spirit or you're being led elsewhere. There's the only two options. There's there's no, I'm in my own mind. No, you're not in your own mind. There's only two minds, a natural mind or a spiritual mind. I'm gonna get to that tonight. And so that's why it's so important that we're able to hear from the Lord so that we are walking in accordance to the path that God has for us that leads to abundant and prosperous and a fulfilling life. And so if your life is not what you expect, if it's not, it's the, if you got some things going on that you know, you know, are not of God, then just stop and just ask yourself, what am I listening to and what am I following? Can you say man to this tonight? All right. So, uh, so Jesus said to, and I'll go back to uh, Nicodemus. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus uh, and he says to him, he says, um, uh, good teacher. <laughs> he said, Rabbi, good teacher. We know that you are, uh, you are a teacher come from God. He says, for no one could do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And so God says to him, he says, no, Nicodemus, uh, you know, now let me, let me set you straight. He says, unless you're born again, he says, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Can you say man to this? And so our God is a speaking God. I want you to get this in your spirit. He shows up on the scene of humanity speaking. You go to Genesis, amen, chapter one. And the very first thing it says, amen, is that God said, God spoke. Our God is a speaking God. Can you get that in your spirit tonight? Our God is is a speaking God. He speaks, he talks, he's a speaking spirit. And even in the garden, the fellowship that Adam and Eve had with God was one of fellowship, meaning then that God was able to speak to them and they were able to speak to God. That's real, that's true prayer, by the way. That's true fellowship. And so, uh, and so our God comes on the scene, uh, 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 speaking. He's a speaking God. And so what I want you to get tonight, I want you to understand this, is that first of all, that God speaks to spirit and not ear. Can you say man to that? He speaks to the heart and not to the ear. So in other words, you just can't stand somewhere and go close your eyes and, and, and turn your ear toward the heaven. I'm just trying to listen to God. God doesn't speak to the natural ear. He speaks to the, to the heart. He speaks to the spiritual ear. He doesn't speak to the, 
He, does, he only speaks to boy. You're gonna bet. You're gonna just gonna bless you. Listen, God only speaks to that which has the ability to speak back to Him. That's why God don't speak to animals. That's why He doesn't speak to uh, uh, this this universe for people who want to talk to the universe. I just want you to know the universe ain't talking to you back because the universe can't talk. The only uh, uh, spirit in this world that can speak is God and the angels, whether they be fallen or uh, 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 godly angels. It's only only the only thing that's going to speak to your spirit, that which you can speak back to. And so God only speaks to spirit. And so in order to be able to hear from God, first of all, we have to put our hearts in a place to hear from God. Jeremiah 25 and 4 says, watch this now. He says, and the Lord has sent to you all his servants to the prophets, rising early in the morning and sending them, but you have not listened. Noah, watch this, incline your ear to hear. So first of all, before we can even get started in this study about hearing from God, it's going to begin with our, first of all, wanting to hear from God needing to hear from God. In other words, this isn't passive, man. This isn't something you're just going to go, you know, yeah, you know, if the Lord decides to say something, I think that'd be good you know, if the Lord speaks to me. No, we have to put our hearts and our minds in a posture to hear from the Lord. You can live on this earth. You can go through your day-to-day -day activities and never hear the voice of the Lord. You can be you can be caught up in just, you know, your routine, your own agenda. And then what happens then many times uh, for for spiritual people, then we start putting God's name on stuff. Or saying he said stuff he really didn't say because we we really heard something ourselves. We really just really came from within us. But we want to believe that is God. I'm trying to help you tonight. And so you got to be able to, you got to be, you got to put yourself in a heart position to hear from God. The, the, the Psalm that said it this way, he says, as the deer panteth for the water brooks, oh, my soul longeth after what? The O Lord. You get what I'm saying? It's a heart issue. It's a posture of the heart. And so when you put yourself in a posture to hear, you, you got to almost be like the deer at the water brook. You, you got to almost thirst for God's voice like that deer is panting for that water. You got to need to hear from God like, like the air you breathe. Am I helping somebody tonight? And so, so it's got to be a posture of the heart. Uh, Jesus said it this way in the word. He said, man, man does not live by what? Bread alone, but by what? Every word, word. When you hear words, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, that, that rhema word, that spirit breathed word. He said, that's what we live by. That's what we make it by. Yes, the Logos is important and we need it, but it's that inspired word. But you got to be able to hear. Can you say amen to this tonight? Somebody say you got to be able to hear. And so God speaks to, he speaks to, uh, to the heart and not uh, to your ear. Can you say amen to this? All right. And so that's the foundation of our, of our hearing. Uh, it's a heart matter. It's a heart matter. In our prayer time with God, it's a heart matter. We have to listen to what God is saying. First of all, we got to meet him where he's speaking. Oh, my God. I wish I had time to unpack that. You have to meet God where he's speaking. Can I say that one more time? You got to meet God where he's what? Speaking. And so that's, as I was saying to you a few weeks ago, that's why when I'm laying on my bed in the wee hours of the morning and God wants to speak to me, I got to get up and go where he is speaking. If he's leading me to my office, then I got to get uh, uh, I got to get up out that bed and come downstairs, go to my office and commune with God. And the first thing I do is I go into prayer. I go into reading his word. I, I go to a posture of listening. I know he has something to say to me. I get my pen. I get my paper out because I know something is coming. And as God begins to speak, the revelation flows and the word says his spirit will remind you to what Jesus has said. John chapter 14, 15, he says, God will begin to reveal to you what Jesus has said. Watch this now and will reveal to you things that, that are to come. 
Oh, my God. God will start showing you stuff that ain't happened yet. He'll, he will begin to speak in your spirit things that are to come. God will help you get prepared for some stuff that you hadn't even seen yet. I have not seen, it have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart. So man, God will begin to deposit things in your spirit that you didn't even think about, know about, couldn't perceive, couldn't wrap your mind around, couldn't, couldn't, listen, you didn't even see that coming. Come on, somebody. You got excuse me tonight, boy, this thing gets good to me. And so, and so, so you gotta, you gotta get in a posture uh, to hear. Can you say man to this? And so that, that was the problem with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law, but he couldn't hear. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He's a teacher. He's a Pharisee. He's a rule of the Jews, but he cannot, he can't hear. He can't hear. And because he can't hear, watch this now, because he can't hear, he can't see. Mm, how do you know that, Bishop? Well, it says it right here in the text. Nicodemus, first of all, go to Jesus by night, right? Sneaky. Somebody say sneaky. Try and sneak to Jesus on down low. And then um, he says, he says to him, he says, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that you are, watch this now. We know that you are a teacher from God, a teacher from God. In other words, he's saying, Jesus, man, you really put out some good stuff, man. I just want to let you know, bro. I just, man, well, some of that stuff you be saying, man, just really be stretching me. So he wanted, he wanted to, he wanted to, to give Jesus a credit to the degree to where, man, you know, you really say some stuff, man, that, you know, mm, that's some interesting things you say there, Jesus. I just want to let you know that, man. I just... You know, I just I just thought about some of that stuff. You uh, you you got a you got a way of saying some things, Jesus. Uh huh. But but he couldn't recognize who he was talking to. You get what I'm saying to you? See, he couldn't hear. And so the very first thing Jesus began to deal with is his inability. Watch this now to perceive, to be able to hear, perceive, and understand. That's what hearing is. When you're able to hear from the Lord, you can hear, perceive, and understand. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus with a with natural eyes and a natural mind. I'm coming through tonight. And a natural eyes and a natural mind can never understand, see, perceive, or understand spiritual truth. It's not able to. Okay, all right, you ain't gonna talk to me tonight. So then Jesus said to his disciples, he said, hey, he said, look, man, I just got through teaching these people. This is my translation. He said, just got through feeding all these people. I mean, teaching all the multitudes and now we're going to feed them. So he says, so what we're going to feed these people with? And they start looking around, looking around, looking around, <laughs> looking around. And the word said Jesus asked him because he already knew what he was going to do. I'm trying to get you to understand. What I'm trying to get you to understand is, see, when you can hear in the spirit, God will begin to show you the impossible. He will show you things, man, that just, that, that, that the natural mind just can't, it just can't, it, you just can't wrap your mind around it. Feeding over 5,000 people with two small fish and five barley loaves. Come on now. I know we live in an age of technology, but don't look at me and act like that. That just happens anywhere. No, man, that's the supernatural power of God. But that what happens when you have the ability to hear. Hear. Somebody say hear. You got to be able to hear. And so Nicodemus was a good example of a person who's acquainted with information, but he, but he don't have any revelation. Ooh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Ah, people, you know, you, you know, you can go to church and, and listen, listen to me, y'all. You know, I love y'all, right? But you can go to anybody's church and sit there and get nothing. And, and, and just because you go and don't get anything, that's, that's one or two reasons for that. You know, okay, I, I, I admit sometimes you're not getting anything because not it, because you're not being given anything. Okay, I get that, I get that, I get that. But then there are times when the word can be going forth, but because of where a person is spiritually, they're not able to come on somebody here. I'm going to say this because Lord knows, I'm going to tell you, I know it's nothing but the Holy Spirit. It is not me. It's not another preacher. It's, it got nothing to do with our ability. So I want to be clear about that. I ain't no boasting with Bishop. 
But one of the things that I marvel about is that I have been preaching, you know, various churches, man, I've been pastoring a while now. And I have had grown people say, I don't, you know, I ain't really get what Bishop was talking about. I know he was talking about this, but I ain't, I ain't really get it. And then have a 12 year old say, oh yeah, I understood everything Bishop was talking about. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. It's a heart issue. And when you incline your heart to hear, God will speak to you. But you want to be sure you're getting revelation and not information. Because the Holy Spirit don't bring information to your remembrance. He brings revelation to your, to your remembrance. That which you have read and studied and got in your spirit, he will bring that to your remembrance to be applied. The difference between understanding and wisdom. If any man like wisdom, let him ask God. The difference between wisdom and understanding is understanding, knowing what to do. Wisdom is having the wisdom to know when to apply what you know to do. Come on, somebody. Can you say man to this? And so that's what hearing does. Hearing gives you the ability to apply uh, that which you, uh, which you understand. All right. So, so natural mind, natural mind, natural eyesight, common sense. Listen, as I close tonight, you are not going to be able to walk with God in common sense. Well, you know, Lord gave you common sense. Now you were born with common sense. Lord didn't give you common sense. There ain't nothing common about what God gives. I know the old people call it mother wit. I know I'm showing my age now. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, man. Listen, listen. Not saying that stuff is not good. No, it's uh, common sense is just the ability to understand and perceive based on the natural. That's all that is. It's common sense. You get what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, and that's good. Yeah, you, you, you need that to some degree. But but you also need spiritual enlightenment and spiritual understanding because you can't, you can't do what God has called you to do. You can't be who God called you to be. You can't influence the lives of people. You can't be his disciple. You can't be his voice. You can't be his vessel if he can't lead you. See, it's not your agenda. It's not you. It's not me. It's not it's, it's, I have to hear this. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't just, I just can't come here on Thursday night. And say, oh, you know what? Mm, I think I, you know what? I think I just, I think I just teach out Jeremiah night. You no, know, oh, I think, no, I have to spend time with God and let God speak to me. I have to hear what he's saying. Then I bring to you what he has said to me. And so that's what proclaiming the good news of Jesus, that's what preaching is all about, declaring what the king has said. Not what I say. You don't want to hear what I say. <laughs> no one wants to know what Bishop got to say, what I feel, what I think, my opinion. You didn't come here for that. You came to hear what thus saith the Lord. And if you come to these, these podcasts, Thursday nights and Sunday nights, you come to Equip for Destiny, Wanting to hear from God, you will hear. If you come with a heart saying, hey, I want to hear what the Lord has to say to me, he will speak to you. And it won't be me, but he will say things through me that will bless your heart and bless your spirit. You'll be like, oh my God, I don't even know how Bishop knew. That I would definitely say exactly where I was, why I didn't know. God knew. Can you say amen to this? All right. So, in closing, all right, so so you got to be able to, you got to be able to hear, all right? You got to be able to hear. And that's what we're going to be dealing with in this in this study is how to hear from the voice of the Lord. And I, I'm, I don't know about you, but I want everything God has for me. Can I get an amen right there? Somebody give me an amen. Give me a good, a good amen right there. I want everything that God has for me. And you know what else? I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't have not one blessing to give to the devil no more in my life. I'm not, listen, I, I stand and declare tonight that I'm not giving away not one of the blessings, not a corner of the blessing that God has given to me through the enemy, robbed, stealing and killing and taking things from me because I have not inclined my ear to hear what the Lord is saying to me in this season. Oh, my God. Woo, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Mm -mm. 
No, 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 no. And I want you to stand in agreement with me, with me tonight. That not one, not listen, not not another loved one, not another child, not my money, not the peace of my home, not my job, not my well-being, not not anything that God has set under my responsibility and stewardship. No, 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 no. I'm not listen, I'm not giving you not one thing to take from me again. I am going to stand and hear from the Lord. And when I hear from him, I'm going to do what I hear. I'm going to go where he tells me to go. I'm going to say what he tells me to say. And if he doesn't say anything to me, I'm going to stand exactly where I am and do the last thing he told me to do. Come on, somebody. Can you say amen to that? Bishop, I don't know what the Lord wants me to do. Stand still and do what he, if you don't know what he wants you to do, stand still and do what you already know to do. That'll preach right there. <laughs> he says, stand still and see the glory of the Lord. I'm excited. Are you excited tonight? And I'm looking forward as we go forth in this, in this study. We're going to talk about how, how God speaks to us and how to incline our ears to hear from the Lord. It's too much at stake for us not to be able to hear God clearly and to know what he's saying, to know that God is speaking to us and that the enemy isn't robbing us by being a fake shepherd leading the flock, leading the sheep somewhere for their destruction. You say amen to this? God bless you. Well, listen, thank you, amen, so much for joining with me tonight. Again, my name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and this has been Equip a Destiny Podcast, where we are equipping progressive-minded people for destiny. Now, before we go tonight, I just want to just, I told you uh, on our last podcast that I had some good news for you, and um uh, I, I just I just want to just share with you something that God has put on my heart. It's been on my heart for quite some time. And uh, and I'm going to be quite honest with you. You know, God has shown me some things that I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I, I haven't I haven't known how to walk this thing out. And uh, and that's what vision does. When God gives you a vision, if you know how to do it, and you already got the resources to do it. And you already know how to go about it. It, it ain't God. Because when God gives us vision, vision is so large and so, so it's just so monumental. It's just so enormous that it generally causes frustration in us. It causes confusion in us because we can't reconcile ourselves with what God is saying he wants us to do. Like Moses going to Pharaoh, telling him to set my people uh, free. Just And so God has given me one of those visions. And that vision... Uh, is for a uh, a online church. Now, now hear me carefully. Uh, uh, when I say online church, I don't mean just uh, what we're doing tonight, and you know this is a part of it. But no, I'm talking about a a a real uh, uh, identified uh, online church with the capacity to minister to people on various fronts. Uh, so I have, uh, some things, man, in work that I think I'm going to be very, very excited about. I'm working on a, a portal, uh, a community portal where you're not only going to be able to receive these broadcasts, listen to messages, get, uh, updates on announcements and things like that, but you'll also be able to submit prayer requests. You'll also be able to fellowship, uh, with other people and, and, and the vision that God has given me concerning this, and this, this expounds well beyond any area. I'm in Atlanta, but we have people on tonight who's uh, from Mississippi. We got people on tonight who's uh, from uh, 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 North Carolina. We got people from various uh, New Jersey. We got people from various parts of the world. And I think that this platform is going to give us the ability uh, to reach people beyond four walls. I'm not against four walls. I don't, I, I'm not exactly sure how God's going to have me to work this, uh, walk this out, but, but I'm very excited about it. And I'm going to be sharing more information with you as we go forward. But I want you to put that on your prayer list for me that as God unfolds this vision, equip for destiny, a real online church where you'll be able to be prayed for. If you need uh, prayer, there'd be people available to you to pray with you. Or if you want to submit a prayer request or, if you want to, if you want to consume the word and you don't want to have to come to social media to do it, that you know that there's a place for you to go where you can get a credible word. Um, I post things all throughout the week and things of that nature and just, just a good opportunity. Not only that, we're going to also be able to give, obviously, because giving is a part of worship. 
but not just give, but we're going to also be able to influence our community. Uh, for you all who don't know, one of my passions and, and, and something that's always been a passion for me is, is a service to the homeless. And so here in Atlanta, we have a huge homeless issue here in Atlanta. And we've partnered with a ministry here called a uh, must ministries, Marietta. You can look them up online. Uh, uh, our church has been a long partner of that, of that ministry. And we've served meals and we've done diaper drives and we've done toilet to drive. So the homeless, we've done uh, an, an incredible amount of service uh, to the homeless through that organization. And so, and so I just want you to know that uh, ministry in just our coming and doing this, this is a part of it, but also part of ministry is going beyond this and touching the needs of people uh, uh, elsewhere. And so, and so, uh, this online church will definitely, uh, continue to do that. And so I just want you to know that your support of this ministry is going to go beyond just what we're doing in the portal, but it's going to also be touching the lives of people, uh, all across this city and not just Atlanta, but God has given me a vision, uh, to expand this to other cities and other, uh, communities of online churches that we can all unite together. And at the appropriate time, we come together physically and celebrate the, the name of Christ. But primarily a church with no walls, a church with no building is, is essentially what we're talking about. Can you say, man, it is. All right. Listen, it's taken me a long time to put that in the atmosphere. Thank you so much for being with me. And I always say that it's not real till it come out your mouth. And so now you've heard me say it. Uh, and so it's been put in the atmosphere. So pray for me concerning that. Listen, also meet me here on Sunday. Uh, I'm doing two services on Sunday. I'm doing a service at 11 and I'm doing one at our regular 7.30 p.m. time. Uh, we're going to be talking about part two of Christ the King, our Easter uh, message. And so uh, uh, please uh, uh, put that on your calendar as well. Uh, and uh, as far as our Bible study, we'll meet you here Thursday night, same place, same time. To continue our teaching about uh, hearing from the Lord. If you've been blessed tonight, will you share this video? Will you, will you comment and share? Because that's how we get the good news of Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ uh, out uh, through social media and uh, out across uh, the Internet as well. Uh, I just think that we live in, in a, an incredible time. We have an incredible opportunity uh, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and a new in a new and contemporary way. We're not changing the message, but we are changing the method. You can't change the message, but you can always update the method. Can you say amen? <clears throat> Don't change the message, change the method. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you. Thank you so much again for meeting with me tonight. Listen, keep me in your prayers. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross. Thanks for being with us. It's been Equip for Destiny where we're equipping you for your destiny. Continue to have a blessed week and we'll see you here Sunday, 11 a.m., at 7.30 p.m. God.